What's up guys, Alex here with another video on Game Maker 2. We are in a Game Maker 2 tutorial series. Uh, in this video, we're going to recap some of the stuff we've already covered. So we've looked at the overview of Game Maker 2, how to make a project. We looked at all the different kind of options you have, the asset browser, uh, the workspace and all that, how to move menus around. Uh, but just starting this video, I want to talk a little bit about me, who I am, uh, kind of get your, get to know your teacher a little bit. So I've been doing programming since high school. I started on, you know, those little TI-83 calculators back in the day. Used to make the games on them and stuff. Uh, but I'm by no means a programmer. I have a little bit of a math background, so I understand the logic and the math a little bit. But we're going to walk through this together. If you have any questions, throw them right there in the comments. Um, I'll get to them, and it's a small channel, so I'll be able to kind of answer everybody's and help you out with anything that you're working on. Uh, so this series right here is going to assume that you know nothing about uh, programming, and so I'm going to walk you through everything from the fundamentals of how to set up, you know, loops and if statements, and what an array is, when to use, you know, constructs and stuff like that, uh, all the way through building a game, making it executable, and having something you can play. So we're going to start with the absolute basics because there's not a lot of videos out there on like the absolute ground floor basics for, uh, for like programming and game maker. Um, and so these videos are going to be like short, you know, maybe two to five minute little one off tips. So I'll try to do a whole bunch of them so that if you're watching it all in a row, you can knock out as many as you can. But I won't go into too many topics in any particular videos. The next couple of videos we have coming up are... Um, more like about what variables are and stuff like that uh, what constants are I'm just gonna try to get all that done in one video that way it can just get done and out of the way we can get to the fun stuff so every five videos or so I'll do a recap video like this so you can also just skip through the tutorial that way if you just want like sort of a brief recap of everything that we just did uh, but other than that just you know like and sub if you like this content if you appreciate the content I appreciate the like like I said it's growing a channel so at least you get to say that uh, you are in here early so let's get into that recap all right so let's just jump right into this uh, tutorial when you first open Game Maker, you might see a screen like this. This just means that um, I have a new version to download, so we'll just go ahead and hit Remind Me Later. It'll do its thing here. So yeah, so over here, this is like the main startup screen that you'll see when you first log in. You'll have some recent projects over here, some new open projects, some tutorials over here you can try. They have pretty good walkthroughs on each of the tutorials. So if you're a beginner, definitely check these out. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and start a new project and then we're going to do some initial setup of our workspace. So we're just going to call this uh, an example here. We have another game going right now. It's the Game Maker tutorial uh, project where we're dumping all this stuff in. But anytime we do these recap videos, we might have to just remake some stuff. So here we're just going to do an example game. So when you create your game, uh, this is the workspace. This is like where you'll basically drop different, you have all these different assets, all these different pieces of your game. So you have like objects in your game that'll do stuff, what those objects look like, different rooms in your game, paths those objects will take, fonts in your game. But whenever you're working with any of these, they'll be pulled out here into this main workspace. So this will become your main working area. We'll show you an example of that real quick. We'll just create a object real quick. And now you see it lives in our workspace. You can move around this workspace by using the uh, center mouse button. You can scroll or you can click and drag uh, that center mouse button. Uh, and then you can interact with these objects. You can close these objects up. You can create a second workspace and name these workspaces. So you might want to do this if, like, say you had a whole bunch of enemy characters and you had, like, the player character. You could put all the player uh, assets in one, all the enemy assets in another, and all the assets that overlap in a third. That way you can keep all the code straight. Uh, you might just want to drag one of these guys over to a different screen so you can see two different sections at once. Uh, yeah, these are totally customizable. They can be free-floating screens or you can redock them. Uh, up here at this top section, it's good to be familiar with a few of these buttons right away. The first one is these, this Windows button. If you ever accidentally say, like, close this Assets window, it's gone. How do you get it back? Well, you go up into Windows, Asset Browser, it comes back, and you can dock it wherever you'd like. You can put it over here, over here, down here. 
So we're just going to stick it back where it was. Oh, doesn't want, seem to be docking for me. Huh. That's curiosity. We'll, we'll figure that out later. Uh, it should dock right there in the corner there. There we go. See, You can also open these, close these. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so that's Windows. has all the different Windows here. The other one is Layout. So if you have a Layout that you end up having, because these are customizable, you can move these boxes. They all do different things. You can move them to different places. Uh, you'll have this other window here pop up. Um, so yeah, if you um, ever lose stuff or get it all messed up, you can just do Reset Layout. It'll bring it right back to the original layout. If you find a layout that you like, you can save it and then load that layout anytime. Uh, these quick buttons right here, this is just close project, new, open, save. This is create an executable, and we'll cover that when we get to the end of the project. Uh, this is debug, play, and stop. You'll be using these a lot. Uh, this runs your game. Uh, this runs your game in a certain mode that'll allow you to see some special stuff. Uh, this is clean, and then we got some game options here. It's good to look at these. It's like frame rates and stuff. Eventually, you'll mess with this if you want to export your game to a certain platform. But for right now, uh, I mean, the main ones are frame rate and this draw color, the standard uh, standard draw color. And you'll notice this opened up as a window also in my uh, workspace. These windows open up. You can just close them. Uh, this button right here, as you just saw, collapses all the docs. So sometimes you'll be working with code. You want it to be your full screen. Just click this, and then you can just work completely with that code. Uh, this is laptop mode, so when you scroll over to the side, it'll automatically like move instead of having to hold that center mouse button. So then the other important uh, important deal here is this asset bar here, this asset browser. So you'll be interacting with this a lot. This is where you'll create objects and create things for your game. So it's good to be familiar with this. You have a little search function here. Anything you put in here will search. Like if you have a bunch of stuff named player, you can search player here. It'll only show the stuff named player, obviously. Uh, here is a, another way to create an asset. There's a diff tons of different ways. You can right-click out here, assets. You can just right-click in here, create. Uh, you can use this button to create an asset. This filter right here allows you to filter based on type of asset, or it could also be on some ordering. Uh, right here is some extra options that you may not know about. So you got the room manager. So when you have multiple rooms in your game, you're going to have like a hierarchy of rooms or like levels or whatever. Like one room might lead to another room. So you have to set all that here. Uh, and then you have your configuration ed editor. We don't really need that at this point. Uh, the game options, again, another way to get to those. And then uh, included files. This is any files in your game. But again, this is just more advanced stuff. Just know that it's up there. Uh, then we have all these different assets. We'll go over all these different assets and what they do in a different video, but just know that we have these different ones here. And then this window is also, op you can open it, you can close it, you can zoom in. So you can have it really big and like zoomed in if you had a really big list or whatever. Uh, the other thing is when I first get into a game, there's a few things that I do right away. So the first thing I want to do is go to this room this is like the first room in your game. It's a standard room. We want to set this for whatever size uh, window we want. And this can change over time. It will evolve as we set up our game. I just want to make something that's nice, usable, something we can start playing with. So I always just do the standard like 1600 by 900. But you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can actually switch these two and you'll notice you'll have like a more of an iPhone look. It'll turn this whole thing up on its side and you'll have sort of the iPhone frame but however you want to design your game I would just set the uh, dimensions here and then the second thing is right here on the layers when you're building your game you're gonna have these different layers of objects on top of each other um, there's different types of layers that you can have this is an instance layer so this is where we put like players and enemies and walls and stuff in the game this is the background layer so this is just what the background looks like you might have a picture here or it might be like clouds or something you know like a mario or whatever uh, but i always change uh, change this background to gray that way we can see what we're doing it could be gray green whatever but that black sometimes when you're drawing stuff or putting objects in here the objects are actually in there but they're not showing up so i like having a nice background where those objects will pop up against um, the, sec the next thing i like to do is uh, when you start messing with these objects uh, and these sprites and stuff, you're going to get this inspector window. It didn't automatically pop up here, but we'll, we'll just go ahead and open it. Inspector. It shows up right here. 
what you can do, what I like to do with this inspector, so when you're on an object, see we're on sprite run right now, we can edit that object right here in this inspector window. We can also do it here in this main little area, but sometimes it's helpful just if we want to make a quick tweak or something to, to do it right here in the inspector. But this is kind of a clunky place for the inspector to live. So what I like to do is take this inspector, I'll put it, well actually here, let's do this first. I'm going to take this room editor here, I'm going to move it over to this tab. So now we can switch between the room editor and the asset browser. I'm going to move this inspector over to this left hand side. So now anytime I'm dealing with things, I can mess with them over here on the right. I can switch between my room and my instances here. And close everything again. Close all this out. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the overview of the whole uh, game maker here and the quick setup. Uh, we went over the asset browser. The last thing is the running and compiling. So here we'll just go to a different game here so I can show you an example of that. One of these other projects I've been working on here. Uh, let's demo my mini golf game. This is a little concept idea I had. Just one level. It has a couple different enemies in it. And I think this one will run for us. So when you're running your game, it's going to be, again, that little start but play button up here. You'll see down here is the output window. If there's any errors in the game, that's one thing we didn't do is set this up. I like to take this syntax and, again, drag this syntax into compile. And you see now we have compile and syntax next to each other. And so then I can move this tab around. And these two errors you'll be looking at a lot when you're trying to debug your game, compile errors and syntax errors. Uh, but right over on the output window, I don't know where output went. We can get it back as we learned our... Huh. Where did the output go? Uh, well, anyway, we'll have to find the output later, but we'll go ahead and run uh, run this game here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and play it. It is compiling the game. It's going to bring it up into its window. You can see it, and here's our window. So you can see we have a couple different... These are all different objects in here. There's a different guy. We have a little ball down here. We can click around. It's like a mini golf game. It's meant to uh, be so that while you're clicking, you don't get a stroke on this game. And so you can like click through the whole level and try to get a hole in one. But obviously there's going to be enemies and stuff that uh, you have to get. But that's it. That's how you run the game. We can actually run a different game and show you what happens with an error. Because I'm in the middle of building out a different game here. So when you actually get an error in your project, it'll show up. See, here's the output window I was looking for before. Again, we have the compile errors next to each other. I have a whole bunch of syntax errors here. There's something broken. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. But this one should run at the beginning. It'll open up. It's a builder type game where we'll be able to build like walls and stuff. We have this guy. He's just randomly walking around or we can control him with the keys. But when we go down here to this button and uh, click play, it breaks it. And so this is like an error you get. You can see right here, it'll say the variable O build menu title underscore H was not set before reading it, which means I tried to use this variable before I declared it. And so I got to go in there and see what happened. Maybe the... the variable name got changed or something so there's there's an issue with this one but we'll we'll uh, investigate that one later uh, and you'll see down here in the output window it logs everything that was going on you can go in here to see what's up uh, you can also just take something like this copy and paste it into oh right here is uh, it's outputting like certain debug messages so you, if you're running your game you can see what's going on you might want to see if a certain loop is running so you're going to output like you know, ran inside the loop to make sure it outputs here. But yeah, so anyway, so that's basically it. Uh, that's compiling and running, real real simple. Uh, again, we're gonna go into all this stuff in depth. This is just like a high level, just so you're familiar with Game Maker. Uh, up next, we're gonna be getting into, um, into actual programming stuff. So I'll be teaching like the if statements and all the, uh, like what a variable is, what a, what a constant is, the difference between arrays, enumerators, and instructs and, and all that. So we'll get into that and we'll start uh, coding here in just a little bit. Uh, thanks guys and we'll see you guys next time.